Joining me now for more from Houston is Leroy Chow, former NASA astronaut. He completed four space missions and worked closely with Russian, Japanese, and European astronauts. Thanks for joining us. Oh, pleasure to be here. Russian President Vladimir Putin announced that it would send its first manned space flights from its soil in 2018. And I'd like to get your thoughts on that and which country you think will chart the future course of space exploration. Sure. You know, Russia has been building their Vostochny uh, launch site for a while now, so it's uh, good to see that they put a date on it, 2018. Of course, uh, uh, they've had some issues with that, with funding and with uh, some other things, but they've been trying to get out of Baikonur now for a while because, of course, Baikonur is located in Kazakhstan. Uh, when it was all one Soviet Union, I guess that was an, an easier arrangement, but uh, uh, interesting that now they've set a date for that. Um, as far as the future of uh, human spaceflight, you know, China is certainly an up-and-coming uh, nation. Uh, the United States I, I think will also play a prominent role, and right now I would consider the United States still to be the lead nation, being the lead nation in the uh, International Space Station program. But uh, the future, the uh, it's going to be interesting to see because China is probably the fastest growing human spaceflight program, uh, with the Americans and the Russians more or less flat right now, or uh, you know, budget-wise. Well, we heard in our last report that it seems to be the consensus out of the Johnson Space Center is the more the merrier. We welcome anyone around the world uh, with our space program. But don't you think there's a little bit of competition amongst regions and countries? Well, I think there will always be competition, not only in space, but I think we get a lot more done through cooperation. In the old days, of course, it was it was competition between the United States and the the former and the Soviet Union back then uh, that led to the the space race, the so-called space race, and then the uh, uh, culminated with the U.S. landing up on the moon. Um, I don't think that situation exists now. I mean, right now we've uh, got a coalition of international partners. Uh, the Americans, the Russians, the Europeans, Japanese, and Canadians uh, working on the International Space Station. And I personally think that coalition should be expanded to include countries like China and uh, perhaps India when they get capability of human spaceflight themselves. You know, a lot of Americans said goodbye to the shuttle program uh, earlier last year. I want to get your thoughts on privatization, if you think it'll be successful, and when we could start seeing the first civilians go up into space. Sure. Uh, you know, in 2009, I was part of the review of U.S. Human Spaceflight Plans Committee, a White House appointed committee to review NASA's human spaceflight plans and create option paths for the then new administration uh, as a basis for the new space policy. And uh, part of what we create or we put together and the administration selected was a sub option that included the commercial side. And it was probably the most exciting yet the most controversial part of the space policy. And that was to uh, direct NASA to uh, help to assist and to partially fund some companies to increase their chances in, of getting uh, human spaceflight capability. The idea being that we've been sending astronauts to low Earth orbit for over 50 years. So the technology is mature, and now it's time to see if we can get the commercial side going, if they can make sustainable businesses. The idea would be that NASA would then contract to the one or more of these companies for supplies and astronaut rotation to and from the International Space Station, relieving NASA resources to go push farther and longer into space. All right, Leroy Chow, thank you so much for joining us from Houston. We appreciate your time.